Imagine transforming a handful of contacts into a thriving network marketing business. Sounds unlikely? Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I achieved this. I'm going to share network marketing lessons I have learned along the way that very few people know about. And the best part? I will show you how they helped me to become the number one earner in my company. You see, often people tell me they can't get into network marketing because they do not know enough people. And this is why they feel they can't succeed. But what I found in my nine years in network marketing is that it's not about having a crowd of contacts from the get-go. It's about the law of average. Meeting new people every day, nurturing a few meaningful connections and steadily grow your network. It's the same in nature. Not every seed grows. Not every effort bears fruit. You would expect that. Right? But without planting these seeds consistently, there is no chance for growth. It's the same in network marketing. You don't need an endless list of contacts from the start. What you need is to plant seeds consistently. Some will grow, some won't, but every action counts. So, if I remember back to my years as an athlete or a coach, we would always say, it's not about the day of the competition. It's about the countless hours of practice and the daily discipline. The resilience to keep going even when it gets tough is where the real magic is happening. And if you are thinking, easy for you to say, Falco, as an Olympic coach, you probably had hundreds of people to turn to when you got started in network marketing. But the truth is, I didn't. Because after years of traveling as an Olympic coach and athlete, I returned to my hometown practically as a stranger in my own land. I didn't have a huge network waiting for me. I had to start from scratch, but building locally was my mantra. I had a strong belief into the power of my community, of starting right where I was. So I began to build my network one person at a time. Sure, it wasn't easy. I faced many challenges. Many of my calls were not answered. Some days were tough, especially when I heard no much more than yes. And I truly remember my ex-wife. She just couldn't get it. Why do you keep going back for more rejection, she'd ask. But here is what I knew. This business was my future, an opportunity to create a better life for my family and for myself. After a year into this journey, as I started to get a rhythm and I felt I was moving forward, I took a leap of faith. I resigned from my main business and committed full-time to network marketing. I was all in. My network was growing slowly but steadily, but fate had a twist waiting for me. Just three months later, the company I signed up with shut down their operations in Europe. Imagine that. There I was, fully invested into this path and suddenly the ground beneath me crumbled. How was I going to take care about my family? I tell you, I was really frustrated. But did I give up? Never. That's not what athletes do. That's not what winners do. I doubled down my efforts. I remembered my training days, how resilience and consistent practice were non-negotiable. So I applied the same principles here. I kept meeting people, I kept nurturing my network. With every day, I became more determined and more resilient. This journey was just as much about building a business as it was about building myself. You know, learning to face challenges and stand back up stronger each time. I understood that like in sport, true success in network marketing comes when you keep pushing and stay consistent, no matter how hard it gets. And you know what? It paid off. My network began to flourish, not overnight, but steadily. So, but what was the strategy that kept me focused during my early days in network marketing? I called it the two stone methods. Two contacts a day keep all the problems away. Simple, yet profoundly effective. Each morning, I'd put two stones into my left pocket as a reminder of my commitment to making at least two contacts every day. Each stone represented the business contact of a new person. Once I got the business card of a new person or they put their contact details into my phone, I'd move one stone from my left pocket to my right pocket. And actually, I made it a game for myself to really move both stones every day without any exception. The intention was not to turn every contact into a new business partner, but to gain new contacts and to get used to talk to new people. Some of those contacts eventually were fitting for my business and for my standards. So it was about conscious networking, connecting with purpose. And here's a tip. Look for qualities like trust, mutual benefits and alignment with your goals. It's like finding the right ingredients for a winning recipe. These are the connections that add real value. 
that grow with you. And how do you cultivate this conscious network? Start with where you are, your local community, your existing contacts, and then branch out. Attend local events, join clubs or groups that resonate with your interests. I call this network on purpose. And remember, in the first place, it's about the law of average. If you talk to enough people, you get enough contacts and you will find the pearls, the diamonds, the aces. And there's another super important aspect and that is being truly friendly. Approach each conversation with genuine interest. Seek to understand and add value. Think of it as sowing seeds into fertile soil. The more care you put in, the better the chances of growth. And here is something crucial. Keep track of these connections. A simple spreadsheet, a notebook, whatever works for you. Note down names, interests and potential areas of collaboration. Now, let's tackle some of the hurdles you might face in your network marketing journey. The path to building a successful network isn't a straight line, but understanding how to navigate through it can set you up for long-term success. One of the biggest fears in network marketing and actually in any venture is rejection. It can feel like a door slamming in your face. But here's the thing. If your intention is solely to sell your product or your service or to gain a new business partner for your organization, you are setting up the possibility of rejection. But if you're 100% convinced about your product, your service and your business opportunity, your true intention could be to increase the quality of life of the other person. And if you truly want to help people, you never need to be afraid of being rejected. When you free yourself from the fear of rejection, you open doors to endless possibilities. So, overcoming rejection is about adjusting your intentions. Don't expect every interaction to lead to immediate success. View each conversation as a learning experience, a chance to grow. The right mindset here is crucial. It's about turning expectations into service. To build your network locally, get involved into your community. Local connections can provide valuable support. You can't even imagine the opportunities for both at the beginning and as you grow to a network marketing profession. Remember, each person might have a network that extends far beyond your local community. In network marketing, your future success depends on people you haven't met yet. Start small, build your network and then let it ripple out. Now, I want to hear your story, drop down your best network marketing experiences and learnings in the comments. So I hope this was helpful. Like this video if you think so and subscribe for more network marketing insights for your success. Until next time, make sure you watch this video and I'll see you soon. Bye!